Hello and welcome to this second video in the series of the product configurator and the product configuration models and its functionality in Dynamics 365 for operations. My name is Jens Christensen. I'm the program manager for Western Computer. And today what we'll talk about is some of the general settings on a product configuration model once it's created. And we will also look into the attributes and the attributes types. So what I like to start off with is how we get to the product configuration model. It's placed underneath the product information management and under product configuration models. And we're going to use one of the examples that are already present in the system. So I'm going to go ahead and open this one up here. And what you'll see here is that you'll see a general section and the attribute section. So in the general sections, obviously, you have the name, you have a description, and then you have what they call reuse configurations. The reuse configurations is a feature that allows for the system to look into whether this configuration has happened for this model before. Every time a new configuration is made, a new configuration ID is generated in order for it to keep unique within the item. However, if you tend to have the same configuration many times, what you can set it to, if you set it to yes, is that it will then look to see if there already is a configuration that has previously been made that is exact same as the one that's being performed right now. If that's the case, then it will reuse or copy that configuration ID into that item or into that sales line or production order line or wherever you do the configuration and that will reduce the number of configuration IDs. If it's set to no, it will always generate a new configuration ID. The use configuration nomenclature is a feature that allows you to design how the configuration ID is generated or in what naming convention would be. And there are a few possibilities here. So by clicking this little pin sign, you come into these edit view where you can control this. So you can add a bunch of different segments into the naming convention. And the different types you have are the type constant, a attribute value, and the number sequence. So type constant just gives you a prefix or you can set whatever constant you want here. And then you have the attribute value where it will look into any selected attribute that you have selected and the value of that. And it will print that into the configuration ID. And then the number sequence, if you have that selected, it will get generated a number sequence on top of that as well. This is, could be an important section you might want to be aware of because if you have set to not reuse configuration IDs, since the configuration ID needs to be unique, if you for some reason end up having this product nomenclature or the sequence to be actually named or to be named on something that's already been done before, then it will bounce back and use the default number sequence that's been set up. So a good tip would be to add a small number sequence at the end of this naming convention. All right, so going back here, what I would like to show you as well is uh, the attribute and the attribute types. So I'd like to start that off by showing you a little picture here. So when you look at the attributes, the attributes are basically the fields that you see in your user interface when you do your configuration. So in the example here, we see we have a field called cabinet finish. It's the naming that is displayed on the user interface is the name. Then you can't see it in, we have the solver name. So the solver name is the systematic name that you will be using if you use this attribute elsewhere in terms of constraints or conditions or calculations or anywhere else. And then you have the attribute types that actually defines the type of the fields or the attributes. So it could be numerical, or it could be text, or it could be a Boolean, or a, like you see here, a checkbox or a, an on-off switch. So I'm going to go ahead and go back here and show you that. So what I'll start off by doing is that I'll look into the attributes types here. And the attribute types are generics, meaning that you can reuse the same attribute type in several different models. So you can see the cabinet finish here is set up to be of a text and it's set up to be a fixed list. So that means that you can only select between whatever values that you've selected down here. Now you see again, we have the value, which is the one that's going to be displayed. And then you have the solver value. So the solver value is something that you will see throughout the process of generating product configurator model, because this is the one that you use again, when you do your expression constraints or when you do conditions or when you set up rules involving these values here. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and click and create a new attribute just to give you some idea of how that works. So I'm going to just go ahead and create a new cabinet. And underneath my type, you see there's this multitude of different types here. However, some of them are not applicable when you're using the product configuration model. Attributes are attribute types are used elsewhere in the system as well in terms of process manufacturing, for example. The ones that are applicable in the configurator is the decimal, the integer, the text, and the boolean. In this example, I'm going to use the integer and I'm going to do a value range just to show you what the possibilities they are and I'm going to say it's going to step from 0 to 10. I'm going to save that and I'm going to go ahead back and then I'm going to go ahead and create a new attribute. So I'm going to just call it cabinet and the solver name is, this, I'll keep it the same here and then I'm going to select the attribute type that I just selected. So let's see if I can find it, it's right here. All right. There's also the possibility that you can set a default. If you have a fixed value or a value range, fixed list or value range, you can set a default so it will always default to some certain value in your list. However, if you build some rules around what values you can select there, you might want to be careful because if you have a rule that excludes that value that you have as a default, then you will have a contradiction in your model and you will have some issues with that as well. There's some other properties for the attribute as well that can define whether you want it to be hidden, whether you want it to be mandatory, whether you want it to be a read-only. The hidden functionality can be controlled in a way so that you only want to show an attribute if certain criteria are met, or if, let's say, it's an attribute field that are used only for calculations that you will be using later in the model, then it's not necessarily for the user to see it, so if, if it's automatically filled by the system. So that can be controlled here whether it's hidden yes or no and if you set it to yes you see this condition field you can also set up conditions of when it's hidden, when it's supposed to be hidden and when it's not supposed to be hidden. And the same thing goes along with whether it's mandatory or not or whether it's a read only or not. So now I'm going to leave it as is right now and just show you how it can be seen here. So I'm going to save it and then I'm going to go into my, there's a little test here so you can test and see your view here. Now you see it's located right here on the cabinet here. And someone you might ask, why is it not on top since we put it on top of the list? Well, the, the thing is that there's a feature that allows for you to define the sequence and, and set up this user interface. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and drop down here and show, so now we have all these values that I've created in the value range for zero to 10. So this is how the attribute and attribute types are controlled and set up together. Stick around for our next video that will be involving the expression editor that will actually go in to discuss what are the conditions, how can we use language to set conditions and set rules. Uh, thank you and see you next time.